I'm just going to share this word with y'all on tonight. I hope it bless your soul. Turn to Mark 27. If you got your phones, if you got an Apple phone, just to tell you I'm saved. We got something else we can do. Mark chapter 10, verse 27. I'm going to start it off. We're going to read together. One thing we have to do in the body of Christ, we have to do one accord. You know? Yes, amen. Now everybody reading something else. I'm reading on the King James Version. I'm going to start it off and we're going to read together. Y'all going to take it over. Amen. And Jesus looking upon them. Say, with man it is impossible, but not with God. For with God all things are possible. When I had got this invite from Pastor um, I'm an individual. I like to pray a lot. I probably can't preach like everybody, like a wife or so, but I have a prayer life. And that's one of my strong suits that the Lord gave me. I pray. He speaks to me when I pray. And he gave me this message, and I was like, Lord, are you for sure you want me to preach this message? Because a lot of times I have heard many people preach this message, and it's really just directed towards the women. And so I was like, Lord, are you sure you want me to preach this message right here? And I try to get out of it and stuff. I'm like, okay. Are you sure? And then last week, we supposed to come last week, we did come. I said, okay, I think he's going to switch the message up and maybe go right back to it all over again. And I said, okay, Lord. And right before you ever deliver a message, if you really call to preach, a lot of times people say, I'm, I'm, I'm called to preach, but many people ain't called to preach. Besides the point. But when you really call to preach or what sort of, before you deliver that word, you go through. You start fighting some things. And I'm like, Lord, I want to get out of this message right here. I almost said, I was going to tell my wife. She didn't know. I was like, I think you need to call Pastor Brian to will. Let's reschedule for another day. <laughs> because when the enemy started fighting you real heavy and real yeah. hard, right. God is trying to speak directly to someone. I want you to put on your discernment glasses and look me up and down whatsoever. I don't know any of y'all. My wife, Claire, that's my lovely wife. I love her. The life. Um, my wife don't talk to me about anybody here. I don't know you at all. But I have a prayer life. Hear me. Hear me. One thing the Lord said on tonight, come out of your comfort zone. If you do not come out of your comfort zone, nothing can happen for you. Because you come to church, church is not for healthy people. Church is for sick people. You don't go to the hospital and try to find healthy people. A lot of times we come to church, we think people, oh, they're supposed to be all the way together. No, half the people come to, all the people come to church, we all jacked up. And we have to repent daily and come before the Lord yeah. and keep that old man upon the subjection. Because the old man always want to come back alive all the time. Amen. All right, we're going to be coming out of the book of Luke. Luke chapter 8. Luke 8, we're going to start at verse 40. And it reads, and it came to pass that Jesus was returning to the people, glad to receive him, for they were all waiting for him. Verse 41, Behold, there came a man named Jairus, that he was a ruler of the synagogue, and he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come to his house. 42, Have one only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she was lying dying. But as he went, the people thronged him. Verse 43, that's where we're going to start at. And there was a woman with an issue of blood, had an issue of blood for 12 years. And the Lord gave me this word, enough is enough. He says, so many of my people, they come to church and they have so many issues and they're trying to hide it. You have all this stuff going on with you. Why are you trying to hide your issue. Many of y'all probably got one. You probably got more than one. You probably got four issues. I used to go to church all the time, Pastor Brian. I used to hide my issues and, and come to church and clap and scream and roll around all over the floor. And I had so many issues. And then when I went back home, my true color came out. My, the, the real Jamel came out, not Minister Jamel, not Elder. Oh, so the real Jamel came out because I had many issues that I was trying to hide in front of the church people. The Lord said, why are you trying to hide your issues? He said, you know what you got on the inside of you. You come to church and you sing praise and worship songs. You, oh, thank you, Jesus, Lord, I love you. You 
saying all this stuff, but you got these issues on the inside of you. Look at the woman. She had an issue for 12 years. For 12 years, she had this issue. Trying to hide it. She was hiding that issue for 12 years. That's a long time to be dealing with a situation. And you had 12 years. All that time, she could have went to the Lord, but she spent so much time trying to hide it. The Lord said, why do you keep coming to my house and you got all these things that's on the inside of you and you don't want to face it? You don't want to face it. And you can lie to everybody else and tell everybody else that you're okay, but you're not. You smile and you cry whatsoever. You go back home, you're still angry. You still got this pride dealing with you, you haven't let it go. You still got this gossiping dealing with you, you, don't, you, don't, you haven't even let it go. Hey, sister, I'm praying for you. Hey, you know what she did? You know what he did? She struggled with this thing for a long time. And I began to, you know, I like to do math or whatsoever. She struggled with this issue for 12 years, right? 12 years equals to 4,380 days she struggled with this issue. That's a long time, yes. right? She struggled with this issue. That's a long time. 144 months she struggled with this issue, walking around, dying. You can come to the house of God. You got all this stuff on the inside of you. Wonder why you're not getting free. You wonder why you're not getting free because you don't want to face it. You want to spend so much time trying to hide what's in the inside of you. Why are you trying to hide it? Why are you trying to hide it? I gave my life to the Lord. I was raised in church, man. We went to church too much growing up. I was saying, and I gave my life to the Lord in 2009. From 2009, I say all the way to 2015, I say 2015, say 14 or what, so that's when I got saved for real. Huh. All the other time, I was hiding my issues. I was coming to church and I was preaching. Oh, God is good. God is good. And you push me hard enough, that's when I cuss you out with the mic in my hand. You push me hard, I'm going to tell you, I got preach, I preach at the church, and so I'm very transparent and stuff. And the Lord said, son, you can't be open to my people while I brought you from. He said, you need to close the Bible and never preach again. Because they want to, they need to hear the truth. Don't hide where you don't bend. A lot of church people like to hide where they don't bend. Yeah. You got to tell people the truth. Tell people you can't come out of your sin. You can't right. change. And I was preaching all that time to oh, God is good. Amen. Hallelujah. And couldn't wait to get out of church to go to the strip club. Hidden issues. Saying that I was saved and I was filled. Filled with something, not the Holy Ghost. She spent all that time trying to hide. You got to catch this. Verse 43. As a woman dealing with an issue of blood for 12 years. And she spent all her living upon physicians and neither could heal anything. Everything that she got, she was running to every, everybody else besides the master. Wow. You're running to everybody else trying to get you, trying to get help from your, from your problem. You're running to everybody else, but you don't want to come to Jesus. You're making excuses why you don't want to fast, you don't want to pray. That's how you're going to get delivered from that issue. Right. Wow. Yeah. I don't care how, how many times somebody lay hands on you, they can lay hands on you until you blue in the face. That's not going to deliver you. Right. You got to put away some meals. I got desperate. I said, Lord, I got so many issues. I need you to set me free. Wow. I got so many things that's going on with Jamaica. I can't hide it anymore. Just like when your mother or your father, they tell you to clean your room up when I was a kid. My mother said, son, go. Jamaica, go clean your room. All right, mom. I want to I said, I'm cleaning up. I keep stuff up under the bed and put stuff in the closet. And you can do that for so long. And sooner they them clothes up under the bed and clothes in the closet, they start to come out. And you hide the dirty dishes up under the bed, too late, you start to smell stuff. You can't hide anymore. The Lord said he's trying to read some of y'all. Deal with your issue. Yes. He said you got to deal with it. She was dying. She was dying. You got to tell yourself enough is enough. I'm tired of being the way. I'm tired of being like this. I don't care who look at me. I made it up in my mind. I said, I don't care who look at me. You can stare at me. You can point the finger at me. Because half the folks that point the finger at you, they got a demon in them too. They can talk about you all day. Oh, you know what she's doing? You know what he's doing? And that situation worse than yours. Verse 44. 
came behind him and touched the border of his garment. The border. That's a piece of a cloth. And then he said it's usually in the fold. The border of something, right? She said, I know if I just touched the, the border of his garment. Another person said, I just touched the, 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 the hem, right? And some people say, oh, oh, she touched prayer beads. The devil is like, she ain't touched no prayer beads. She touched some beads. So what's no? She touched some beads. She said, if I can just touch the, the hem, the border yeah. of his woman, I, I, yeah. I know I've been made whole, right? That's why you got to come out your comfort zone. I don't care who look at me. I know my issue. I know what I'm dealing with. And I can just get to the house of God. I'm going to press my way to the altar. If I can just touch the, 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 the border of Jesus' woman, I know I can't be made whole. As a matter of what I'm not dealing with, I know I'm going to be set free. That's how you got to be. You have to be desperate. Are you desperate for your change or are you just going to keep coming to church and existing? Existing. What is your issue? The Lord said some of y'all deal with so much anger and you don't want to face it. He said you deal with so much pride and you don't want to face it. He said y'all got so much unforgiveness on the inside and you don't want to face it. And we're going to tell you something about that unforgiveness. You can go wrong, go on and just exist in your church and you feel like you're okay, but truth be told, you're not. I told myself, you can tell yourself a lie for so long, you sure believe me. I told myself, yeah, I'm forgiving my father. Last week, I had to go preach a service somewhere and I, and I looked up on my phone, my aunt passed away and stuff, and I, I seen a picture of my father. Right? I don't like I see the picture of my father. I looked at him. <laughs> Look. Looked at him. Looked at him. Looked at him again. I slammed my phone down. And the Lord said, son, you haven't forgiven him. Yeah, I have. He said, why are you slamming your phone down? That's one of my issues that I struggle with. And I told God, I, I let it go. Sometimes you say you don't know, forgive a person to that person come back in your face. All that anger, all that hurt come right back to the service. Come on, come on. Because you lock yourself behind closed doors and soon later it's starting to come out. And then when I seen the picture of that man, all that anger and that hurt came all the way back up to the surface. The little kid in me came out all over again. He said, son, you got to deal with that. He said, you can't preach to my people if you don't want to face your issue. He said, you can't preach if you don't want to face it, son, you got to deal with that. And I was talking to the kids the other day at my job. I had to do a service. And while I was talking to them, I said, I, I seen the picture of my dad. And, and I got so mad. I was saying, I just broke down and started crying. I said, Lord, I need you to take this from me because it's eating away at me. It's consuming me. And I feel like I'm okay. But truth to be told, I'm not okay. I can't even speak well of him because I'm still mad what he done when I was a kid. He said, some of y'all got this unforgiveness. It's deep rooted in you. He said, one of the things, he said, some of y'all deal with, y'all deal with abandonment. You deal with abandonment. That's one of your issues. You got to face it. He said, some of y'all been dealing with this for a long time. Or are you going to face it? Or are you going to keep making an excuse? Look at this woman right here. She got tired of being the way she was. And she knew if they catch me out here, I can be stoned to death. She could have been killed, but she said, I don't care. I'm going to get to Jesus. That's how you got to be. You got to get desperate. I don't care how, what it takes. I'm going to get to the Lord. Sometimes you got to do other things other people won't do. I had to get desperate. A lot of people look at me, Jamel, you're so, you, you strange. You, you're doing too much. I was going on three or four, I was going on fasts three or four days. No food, no water because I wanted to be delivered. I got tired of being the way I was. Oh, preacher, you're fasting too, too much. No, I'm not. I ain't fasting enough. I'm not, I'm not crying out enough, brother, because I got this stuff on, on the inside of me. You don't know what happened to me in my childhood. I'm very transparent. I don't, I'm not playing. A, I'm not a victim. I'm going to tell you what God done brought me from. I had issues from my, from my childhood. For five years, I was violated by somebody in my family for five years, and I held on to all of that. And I wonder why I was so angry all the time. And the Lord said, son, you got to forgive that person or you can't preach my word. I said, Lord, how can I forgive that person? You know what they've done to me. They took a part of my childhood. I can't get back. I can't get that back. He said, son, you got to forgive me. I said, Lord, it hurt. He said, I know it did. 
I know it's digging at you. He said, but you got to forgive him. I said, well, I don't want to pray for him. But you do. You got to. A situation happened. What broke a lot of things. I was just crying out to the Lord. A situation happened. I got a call from somebody. And they said, pray for this person in your family. They just got stabbed eight times. Or whatsoever. There's a possibility of not going to make it. And the Lord said, are you going to pray now? Are you going to forgive him now? I said, okay, Lord, I'm going to forgive that person. But it hurt. Yeah. Some things may hurt. But you got to face it. Yeah. I'm going somewhere. She touched the border of his garment. And immediately her issue of blood was snatched. I like that. Mm-hmm. To seize or to suddenly possess without permission. If you come out of your comfort zone and touch the, the hem of Jesus' garment, I don't care what you're dealing with. I don't care what you're struggling with in your mind. I don't care what your issue may be. I promise you, he will set you free. I don't care what it is. Are you going to come out of your comfort zone? Are you going to say, God, I don't care who looks at me. I need to be set free. I don't care. Talk about me, but I'm getting to Jesus. 45. And Jesus said, who touched me? All denied Peter. And they said to him, Master, a great multitude from thee. You know, one of the things, if you really study the word multitude and you look Jewish or whatsoever, it says a multitude it usually consists of probably 10,000 people. That's just counting men. That's not counting women. Right. Imagine all those people surrounded around Jesus, right? All those people surrounded around Jesus, but she's the only one that got the miracle. Uh-huh. Just think about that. That's a, that's, just think about that. Out of all those people that were reaching out to touch them, right? Some people come to the church and they really don't want to be set free because they're not giving their all, right? Okay, Jesus, I'm going to give you this, but I'm going to hold on to this. I'm going to give you this, but I'm going to hold on to that. Right? She made up her mind, I don't care who look at me, even though I may get killed by doing this, I'm going to get to him. That's how you have to get it. Who cares who look at you? Lord, I'm going to press all the way. I know what I'm dealing with. I know the hurt that's on the inside of me. I don't care who stares at me. I don't care who look, look down at me. I don't care. I got some stuff on the inside of me. If you don't set me free, I'm going to die in this situation. The multitude thrown me, and they pressed thee, and said thou, who touched me? And Jesus said, somebody has touched me, for I perceive that virtue has gone out of me. He already knew virtue had gone out of him because some people are desperate. She was desperate in her situation. You can come to church and look nice sitting on the on the bench and stuff and say, oh, I love the Lord, but you go back home, you still hurt me. The Lord said, come out of your comfort zone. Stop worrying about everybody else and looking across the room. I know this message is not for me. It's for that person across the room. The Lord, the Lord said that word is for you too. No more looking at nobody else. All of us are a work in progress. God is finishing the work on the inside of all of us. All of us got some issues that we need to face. If you say you don't got no issue, you need to be the first one on this altar. You got to deal with this issue. Are you going to press? Are you going to come out of your comfort zone? Are you going to worry about who's looking at you? Are you going to worry about who's, who's going to be pointing the finger at you? The Lord said, if you come out of your comfort zone, he said, I'm going to set you free on tonight. Some of y'all have been violated and you said you don't got past it, but truth be told, you have not got past it. You haven't. You said, oh, I'm past it. No, you haven't. You haven't got past it. You just been pushing it down so far. But that stuff is still there. You still angry. You still got the unforgiveness. You still got the pride there. You still got all this stuff there. I don't care how much you speak in tongues over it. You still got to face it. I don't care how much you see praise and worship songs. You still got to face that issue. You got to face it. I had many issues. And I felt like I was not going to get past it. Because I came to church and the people I came to church with were the main people that was talking about me. I couldn't get free. I came to church to get free. And I said, preacher, pray for me because I'm struggling with this. And after I get out of the church, everybody knew about it. Hey, preacher, listen. Okay, God is going to set you free from blah, blah, blah. What? 
Elijah going to do? Who you heard that from? Oh, uh, the elder told me about it. I just asked him to pray for me, and everybody know about my situation. Some of us got these issues, and we don't want to let nobody in the church know because we want to hide it because we're afraid to open up to people at the church because we think that they're going to run our information around. You, you're scared. That's why you want to hold on to your issue. But who cares if they know about your issue? Who cares? That's how you get it. I don't care if you know about my issue, right? I tell people what I'm going to be. I don't tell people, this is what God brought me from. I learned a lot of stuff along, on, along that road. You can laugh at my issue. Yeah, I was there once upon a time before. I don't live there anymore. That's how you get to be. I don't care if you talk about one. Well, yeah, yeah, I struggled with that. Yeah, I had that issue. Yeah, I was like that. But, but, but Jesus don't set me free from that. Let them talk. Are you willing to come out of your comfort zone? Are you willing to say, Jesus, here am I? I'm going to press. I'm going to press. I'm going to fully open up to you. One thing that I tell the young men at my job, I said, if you really want to experience the power of God, I said, you got to open up to him. And you can't be looking at who's next to you. I, don't, I said, close your eyes. And I said, just begin to open up your mouth to him. And I deal with probably about 25 to 30 boys. Or what, so, and half of them ain't never been in church a day in their life. I said, you come out of your comfort zone, I promise you, Jesus Christ is going to touch you on tonight. Teenage kids don't do courtesy falling. They don't cry out to Jesus. They don't. Some of the kids that's in my facility in there for murder, crying out to Jesus, Lord, save me. I, I, I'm tired of being the way I am. Desperate people do desperate things. Are you desperate for your change? Are you desperate for your change? Or are you going to keep coming to church being the way you are? Are you going to keep coming to church? Just existing. Twelve years this lady wrestled with this thing. She was broke. The Bible says she spent everything she had. For twelve years she's been running to all these different places trying to get an answer. She could have just came to Jesus and got it. You've been running to everybody else because of your issue that you're dealing with. The only thing you got to do is come to Jesus. You want to run to that person, that person. It's the saying, hurt people always want to go run to hurt people to get advice. They don't want to run to the people that really got the oil on their life. They want somebody that's going to agree with them. They don't want to run to people, no, honey, you just need to change. They don't want to run to people that's going to correct them. They, don't want, to, they want to run to people that's going to be on their side. Yeah, he was wrong, girl. He was wrong. He was a dog. That's how some people want to be. If you really want to be set free, hear me. If you want to be set free from your issue, hear me. You got to come out of your comfort zone. No more hiding. No more hiding. She pressed her way through a crowd of probably 10,000 people. No, it's probably more than that because they just, count, they just count the, counted the men. Think about the women and children that was around. That probably 15,000 people she pressed her way. She said, whatever it takes, I'm going to get to Jesus. Or you got whatever it takes in your spirit. I'm going to get to him. Whatever it takes. I don't know your issue. I don't know what you're dealing with. But I know somebody that does. Right. I know somebody that can set you free. Yeah. I had many issues and I felt like I never wanted to get better. I felt like my life was always going to be in a smile. I made my mind up, okay, Lord, well, I'm going to run to you. I'm all the way in. Then two weeks later, I'm back to the same old place. Because I didn't want to deal with that thing right there. Okay, God, I will deal with everything else. But that right there, I just don't want to let that go. Some things we hold on to is like a security blanket for us. We want to hold on to that offense. It builds a wall around us, right? And the wall that you build around the, build around yourself become your own prison. What is your issue? What is your issue? Stop coming to church and say, I'm okay. I don't have no problem. The Lord said he's been trying to speak to some of y'all about some of the things that's in your heart. About some of the things that's in your heart and you wonder why you're struggling on the inside. Yeah. He said, I'm trying to take that right there. You say, okay, Lord, I'm going to let it go. I promise you. Okay, Lord, I'll let it go. Oh, Lord, it made me mad. All right, Lord, I'll let it go. Oh, Lord, they roll their eyes at me. I'm going to think about it. 
If I wasn't saved, I'd beat them up. That, that, that should get all the way out to you. If I wasn't saved, I'd cuss them out. That should be all the way out to you too. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Are you tired of being the way you are? Are you tired of being the way you are? That woman struggled with a condition for 12 years. Are you tired of being the way you are? Do you really want to be set free? Do you really want to be set free? Do you really want to be made over? She struggled with this situation. When you begin to lose blood, another thing they say, you begin to come confused. Blindness began to take, take place. Right now in your seat. Right now in your seat. Whatever your issue is, now is it's just between you and Jesus. Now is not the time to be looking at somebody. I want somebody to come and lay hands on me. So I want somebody to come and touch me. You don't need nobody to come and touch you. The only person you need is Jesus. <laughs> 